<laughs> in studio, Robbie Blair from Main Street Martinsburg, Raven Lamp as well. Good morning to both of you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Yeah, how are we doing over there, Raven? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? Awesome, awesome. Feeling good. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty positive right now because Rebecca Callage is, you know, <laughs> we went from talking about the problems of the world to solving them. But it's all about the youth and what the future and going forward. That's what this whole show's been about. I think that's true. Content. Speaking speaking of the youth, are you ready for are you ready to be an eighth grader? I was just talking to Liz Cook on the way in here, my colleague over in Jefferson County, and yes. she said to make sure sure I asked you on air if you're ready for it. I am. Um <laughs> Are you trying to be smarter than an eighth grader? Well, it's it's a West Virginia history contest, oh, yeah. and they had it the first time in 2019, and my team fortunately won, and and I studied like crazy, and I get, um, I'm super competitive about these types of things, and I didn't do it the second year. I kind of purposely ducked out because I didn't, I wanted to stay on top and go out, mm -hmm. but uh, Jim Weisong, who's very persuasive and a great guy, he called me and asked me to be on his team, so. It's a really cool, cool event, actually. I told Liz she's got to come on here and talk about it. They yeah. do, they're they the main street over in Charlestown, and they do a West Virginia Fest for West Virginia Day. Uh, tons of West Virginia athletes come up, like uh, Nico Markiel, C.J. Johnson. Uh, they Donaldson. play the NIL. Donaldson, what did I say? Johnson? Johnson, yeah, Donaldson. Yeah, um, yeah really cool thing that they do over There'll there. There's probably 10,000 people there. Yeah, it's huge. That's it's big. huge. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, your hair's looking great today, let me tell you. Thank you very much. We got a ribbon hair. cutting at uh, noon over at the old Emirates building. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom floor still looks like a mess because uh, Drew Johnson and all those guys are still working on it. Right. Um, I know they have a restaurant that's going to go in there, they hope, by the end of the year. Um, but upstairs, they have eight beautiful units uh, that are opening up for Airbnbs, um, which, you know, that's starting to become a real market here. Uh, people come and stay in Martinsburg, eat. It's kind of like their home base, and they explore the whole right. eastern panhandle for the well, weekend. So it's pretty cool. a couple of years ago when they were working on that ordinance, you, know, right. you had Jamie Lopez in here right. a couple of different times talking about it and how he thought it would be very key to how downtown Martinsburg's future would play out. Right. And uh, I think the fallout positive uh would be that you know we've seen a lot of those come in and a lot of um what, what's been good is we haven't taken long-term rental or long-term you know housing and turned it into right. airbnbs we've taken stuff that need a lot of work and people have invested a lot of money to fix it up and now you have both you have a lot of residential you have the obviously the shenandoah hotel which is now apartments um you have what's going on at the interwoven mills um you know, 400 new market rate luxury apartments, and then you have Airbnb. So you, you get a great balance of tourism downtown and, you know, long-term uh, residents, which is cool. It's yeah. a great balance to strike. And with long-term residents comes mm -hmm. more restaurants, shops, and such in the downtown area. Right. That's that's one follows the other. Right, exactly. Um, and I, I don't think it, it has to be where we're all in on uh, – long-term rental and, and no Airbnbs, because, you know, we don't have a hotel in downtown anymore. Uh, so it does fill a need, and I, I think it's uh, it's great. It's going to be really good. It's one of the prettiest ones downtown. So And where is it? Uh, the old Emirates building, so right beside of Habanero there on Queen Street. Okay. Um, yeah, the 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 once it goes live, you'll be able to find it on Airbnb. Absolutely stunning. They did an amazing job. Talk to me about your next event coming up. Well, next week, the next event actually is... Uh, this weekend, we have our Duck Derby, uh, the Tuscarora Creek Duck Derby in year two. Kind of a fun thing that we started for the 250th uh, anniversary of Berkeley County last year. Uh, pretty simple. You, you buy a duck, and there's trophies, first place, second, first, second, third place uh, for kids and for adults. Um, $10 for an adult, $5 for a kid. We just dump them in the creek, and it's a part of Founders Day and little race. It takes about 20 minutes. So just a fun, family-friendly thing over at Adam Stephen House that's this weekend at 2 p.m. Do you have it broken down by uh, political figures like you did last year? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Whitaker and... Um, and Kevin knows both will be going head to head. So the, I think the loser gets dunked at the Fourth of July celebration at the airport. Uh, so always fun, little crosstown rivalry. Um, so that's happening this weekend. But our big festival that's happening next weekend is our wine fest, which we've kind of rebranded as the Wine Shine Fest, uh, local libation celebration. Um, we I know all the ABC laws, Mr. Hornby and everybody have worked really hard to amend this past session, 
But uh, we did find a license that we could take advantage of for this year before the law goes into effect, um, allowing two of our local distilleries to serve cocktails. So Devil's Dew will be there representing uh, Jefferson County, and Bootleg Distillery will be there from Berkeley County, both serving cocktails of their uh, craft uh, liquors. Uh, I know Bootleg's more rum, uh, Devil's Dew has more more whiskey, so they'll be doing some craft cocktails. We have five in in-state wineries that'll be there. One meadery that's here out of Berkeley County um, making their debut, uh, which mead is like a honey wine for anybody who doesn't know. It's really tasty. Um, yes, you said mead. Yes. As in Beowulf, not uh, meat. Yeah, not meat. Yeah. Mead. Uh, M-E-A-D. Beowulf, good for you. I'm yeah. here for you, big guy. Okay, all right. Okay. So I got new respect now in your eyes, don't I? <laughs> that's good. Mead and Beowulf. Yeah. That ninth grade reading paid off. <laughs> and then uh, we'll also have uh, Bricks 27 is going to be serving some wine there, too, which is great to loop in our downtown businesses. But it's from 11 to 7 p.m., um, presented again this year by Petty Pest Control. Uh, can't speak highly more highly about them. I, I mean, we use them at, at my house. And When it comes to uh, any food event, I want Petty Pest Control there. Yeah, to make exactly. Sure exactly. There's nothing additional in the food. Exactly. Uh, and speaking of the food, we got, what, seven food trucks? Me really, too. really really tasty food trucks that'll be there. We tried to break it up, all the different genres. We got flatbreads, we got, you know, barbecue, a little bit of everything, some desserts. Um, so it's going to be a fun day. Lots of music, too. So if you're not of the alcohol persuasion, um, we do have really awesome music that'll be there. Cashmere opens it up. Nathan Barges Band in the middle. And then we end it with Raised on Analog. So some cover music to get down to. And then uh, a local local country artist that people have you know really good really great respect for uh, he's got a big following here locally mr gilstrap it occurs to me that when meals on wheels came in they brought food yes and if you're promoting a wine festival <laughs> or a local libation <laughs> celebration i think the segment would go better with free samples just kind of keep that in mind i agree we'll give you well next time we'll bring in the little <laughs> complimentary cup that comes with it you get a little glass that has the logo on it right. uh so yeah that's that's a Never great point tasting and we show. should we should do that that's are you a sommelier is that, is that how you say it no that's am i a sommelier no i just drink wine <laughs> it's, 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 so i'm a poor man's sommelier there he's, you a, go. he's a some of the above right. you, you could bring in a box and he wouldn't know the difference yeah. uh, well no that's not true do the pepsi no, test not, pepsi coke test on yeah, the wine right. i want to talk uh, not to move away from the celebration sure. stuff let's talk a little bit about the interwoven yes uh, mills pro uh, project how far along is that? When does that expect to have... It's a big facility, so I'm it's assuming huge. it's going to open in sections. So I have two two comments to make about that because we've actually been working the past week to try to schedule a little Facebook Live in there um, to get people up to speed about where things are going. The last I talked to them um, in, what was it, December of last year, mm -hmm. they said heads in beds in the first phase by this fall. Wow. wow. Um, this so coming fall, 23? This coming fall in a in, uh, portion of their... Because they're breaking it down into different phases. They're not right. doing the whole facility all at once. Um, and I think that has to do with the use of their historic tax credits and, and how they're going to manage some of the some of those funds. So um, more on that once I do get in there and have a Facebook Live and can talk with them again. But uh, that was the last that I heard from them. Um, one other note that I would say is for folks that are curious, you know, what's this going to look like? Please go and look up Monument Construction. Uh, they're out of Richmond, Virginia. Their portfolio will absolutely blow you away. Mm -hmm. The quality and the um, just the aesthetic of what they do, this is what they do. They take these uh, properties and they repurpose them for this exact, exact thing. Um, but I was shocked when I went a couple of weeks ago and looked at, I have friends who live in v Richmond, Virginia, and they live in one of the facilities, and they sent me a picture of it, and I was like, oh, that's great. Once I looked at their portfolio, it's astonishing. They do amazing work, and what what's crazy to think is this is going to be 400 plus units. Most of the stuff you'll find on there is 150 units, uh, 85 units. So this is a massive property. This is a massive project. And um, yeah, it, I think the people uh, locally here, at least I, I did, you know, I knew it was a big deal. I knew it was exciting, but not until I really dug into their work and, and looked at some of the numbers that I was like, man, this is, this is going to make a bigger impact than people realize. I assume we have all the infrastructure, the sewerage, and all that that's necessary to, to make this work. Well, when's the last time you went down Qu King Street? 
Yeah. Uh, it they they have streets closed down as we speak, working on it. Oh, is it okay? Um, yeah. So I, anybody, I asked that because I was going to go that way. So <laughs> I won't now. Well, King Street isn't closed, but one of the side streets there, uh, right right before you get to the property, is they are addressing some needs. Um, I, you know, I can't speak for the city or for Monument, um, and I won't pretend to, but I do know that there are upgrades that are being made um, in that regard. So things are chugging along. Exciting. It is exciting, Mr. Harvey. Robbie, I've I've been in this area since 2005, and and the the momentum that's developing in Martinsburg is is very noticeable. Do you see it slowing down, or or leveling off, or currently, or in the future? Like, do you project After, it? Yeah, project it. Uh, I would say that there are some some projects that. Uh, you know, when you look at the growth of communities, and I was really lucky to go up to the Main Street America conference a few months back in Boston. Um, and when you look at some of the things that are happening in these communities that are moving forward, that are making progress, um, it, it usually it takes a certain level of populace, like around 30,000 people in, in a community to, to reach, I guess, a certain forward momentum that that uh, we all look at neighboring communities and stuff like that. But what I'll say about that is um, if there is a silver lining and all that came from 2020, uh, local municipalities were, were given ARPA funds at a rate that, you know, federal dollars they'll never probably see again. Um, so there are some things that I think accelerated uh, some of the, the things that might be 10 years off based on, you know, we need to reach certain growth uh, levels to see that kind of stuff come into downtown Martinsburg or neighboring communities for that matter. Um, I think some of those projects have been accelerated. I think that we're just seeing kind of the tip of the iceberg, honestly. Um, adding 400 units to a downtown that we're not, we're not taking apartments that did exist and and fixing them we're taking a building that's been vacant for years and was never residential and inserting very very high quality apartments uh, that's going to be extremely extremely important to our economy downtown um, you think of projects like the garage about a block away from that project um, it's kind of ahead of its time a little bit it's you know, it's definitely going to rely on the foot traffic from folks over there, um, but I only I only see it growing more. Um, I think that the ripple effect of that project, um, along with some of the quality of life things like the Frog Hollow Trail, and I know that they have so many plans to extend that not only to uh, the Route Nine Trail that goes all the way to Jefferson County, but also beyond that to uh, other parts of the city. Um, I think it's only going to continue to to go in the right direction. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm extremely positive about the the forecast of things in downtown. Um, it's 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 really an exciting time. So you need more people. To, to we do. <laughs> yeah. Well, we o we always need more people to be engaged and not just uh, you know folks that are interested in watching from the sidelines. Well, but. you know, there's a lot of people that don't live in technical city limits right. that are that still enjoy the amenities of the city. Do, are you factoring that into your equation? Well, you know, as somebody who's never lived in the city limits, I've always been a Hedgesville boy um, out in the county. I think that that is an important factor in, in what you project all of this. You know, I don't, I don't know that uh, Martinsburg is needs to necessarily rely on just the, the populace of the city. I think that um, the city, you know, city council and, and everybody that works at City Hall has done a really good job of growing smartly with the resources that they do have uh, at their disposal. But I do think that you factor in not just um, Berkeley County, but I think the, the, the tri-county area of the Eastern Panhandle, and then even the 81 corridor, you know, our, our mission statement and, you know, some of our phrases are, uh, we are the the heart uh, at the heart of our region and the heartbeat of the community. And when you think about all of those geographic elements, we are at the center of the the tri-state uh, 81 corridor. Um, we are at the center of the Eastern Panhandle. So everybody, every community has to embrace what makes them unique. Um, and I think other communities have done that really well. Uh, and and we're we're starting to find out what what our future looks like and who we are as a community. Um, just embracing. I always like to reference my, my brother-in-law lives in Austin. Uh, and the, the phrase there is, keep Austin weird. 
And I always say, you know, Martinsburg and all the communities, we really need to embrace what makes us weird, what makes us unique, because what Charlestown, what uh, Harper's Ferry, Shepherdstown, Berkeley Springs, what they all offer is very different from what Martinsburg offers. Um, and I think the more that we lean into what Martinsburg has and what we're good at, um, I think that 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 bodes well for not just us, but the whole Eastern Panhandle as it continues to grow. Well, what are your biggest obstacles? Oh, me personally with Main Street Martinsburg or the city of the, the well, city? With, with, I think with that, Main Street Martinsburg, like, sure. for, for your organization to grow further? I think uh, the, the hurdle that, you know, always, always uh, is in place for nonprofits is always funding and making sure that we have a steady uh, steady stream of income. And that's why events such as the Wine Fest uh, and some of our other big street festivals, um, they, they are important. We're not in the business of tourism. You know, we have a CVB that does that, but um, they serve as a fundraiser for us. And uh, between funding and then um, volunteer support, you know, to do some of the stuff that we like to would like to do and would like to see um, some of the partnerships in terms of economic development um, with the city and, and other entities. It takes a, a robust um, robust group of volunteers. We're a volunteer organization. There's only two of us. And for a long time, there was only one person at Main Street Martinsburg on staff. So um, I think people can sometimes get hung up on who's on the board and, and how do I get on the board. But really, I think that the structure of an organization like Main Street, the goal would be for the board to say yes, no, okay, um, based on the 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 work that's being done on the committees uh, between the four pronged approach uh, that Main Street America has, and then also our um, our other you know specialized committees throughout the year. Robbie Blair is our guest here on the program, along with Raven Lamp from Main Street Martinsburg. The uh, Wine Fest, not this weekend, but next weekend. Yep, May right? 20th. You got the crepe truck, by chance? Oh, we do not have a crepe truck. Got to get the crepe truck. Where's the crepe truck out of? Yeah, I didn't even know I think Thermont. Ooh. Yeah. Get in touch with those guys. Those I will. crepes are just amazing. Well, and... Turkey, cheddar, cheese, crepe. We can all pretend we're in Paris yeah. with, with wine and, uh, <laughs> and, the crepe and some truck. crepes yeah, I mean, out there on Boydville. What's what's your schedule like for the rest of the summer and activities into the fall, Robbie? Well, we have uh, our summer concert series kicking off uh, June 9th. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Um, and what we're doing with that one, uh, it's a little bit of a, a pivot from Fridays at 5 because... Is that discontinued? Uh, no, uh, it is just... It has evolved because we got some feedback that, uh, you know, it's a little bit early for folks that work, you know, uh, work nine to five jobs. They'd like a little bit more time to maybe go home, get dressed, get freshened up. Um, so we moved it to 6 p.m. And then uh, due to, you know, not wanting to ask too much of our uh, business community in terms of sponsorship, we have we've gone every other week. Is, is the model. So you can find it on our Facebook, our website, everywhere, the dates. But we got some really big names this year. Um, with with the change in approach from fundraising, instead of uh, getting, you know, and, and it's been a great event. It's not at all something that I'm at all poo-pooing in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the pivots with us moving it later, uh, hoping that more people will be able to come that work, or maybe they're from Jefferson County, Morgan County, want to come enjoy some live music. Um, we wanted to give them a good bang for their buck, even though it's a free event. Um, uh, we have folks that, like like our, our July 7th band, I keep referencing. When I started looking for bands, they had 52,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Um, and then the last I checked, they were up to 84,000. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're a bunch of up-and-coming bands from D.C., from Columbus, Ohio. One guy, Eric Willis, is coming from Texas. Um, they're all coming through on tour. So we're really excited about that one. It's alternating every week during the summer at 6 p.m. on the square. And for all of our uh, you know volunteers, all of our uh, sponsors, all the people that partner with Main Street regularly, we're going to have some uh, special happy hours beforehand. So if people are really excited about 5 p.m. and they can't get can't shake that, we're going to meet at different restaurants every week to to just patronize some of the downtown businesses. Um, and then also our farmers market kicks off June 3rd, so that's every Saturday and it's moved to the Martinsburg Roundhouse um, every Saturday from 10 to 2. Um, and we're excited about it moving to the roundhouse for a couple of reasons. One, it activates a space regularly that, you know, sometimes doesn't have as much traffic. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, what they're doing there on, um, 
on one of the auxiliary side buildings there that they've got funding for in uh, with with HVAC with um, with an elevator. Things are moving forward on that building. I think the long term goal there is to make that a year round market similar to that of the capital market yes, in I, Charleston. I have heard that as well. So tell you what, hang out. We've got a final minute. We'll come back and do it in a moment here. It's Bobby Blair, Raven Lamp from Main Street Martinsburg. More to come after this. 